Welcome to today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I got something very special for you. I sat down and spoke to William Eubank, the director of Underwater. Now, the first half of this interview is completely spoiler free. You are then given a pretty big warning, and then we do touch on spoilers. So, for those worried about that, don't worry. Just watch to your heart's content and then leave at the spoiler warning. Now, to follow William Eubank and his relevant social media, that will all be linked down below in the description box. So, please do go and check it out. It says just super swift, but that is uh, his tag on all various social media. So, please do go give him a follow. Great dude. Obviously, thank him so much for the interview. Uh, but please do enjoy. Uh, welcome to the video, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome... Uh, William, Underwater, what a fantastic film. You've <laughs> it's clearly seen my review. I, I absolutely loved the hell out no, of that I, film. Oh my God, I had fun watching. I had fun watching your uh, trailer response. That was so, that was a great, uh, that I don't, it was just <laughs> like, I like, you're like, what is that? Oh my God. You like stopped at that one part and you were like, what is behind? Is that a fish man? Is that, it's yeah. a man. <laughs> it was awesome. We were, I was laughing so hard. But yeah, in a well, good way. it was great, great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. was it because it, it, it? Well, I think this. I, I guess what a great way to start, really, because it, it that came, the trailer came out of nowhere for me, um, and I think it came out of nowhere for everyone, and that's probably because the film is well, I, yeah. was recorded a while ago, nowhere. wasn't it? Basically, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, so I yet. think let, let, let's talk about that. I guess what, what like a good little segue into that. I mean, what what happened to, um, to, to well, the best of what you can off, say. Thank you for having me. So I appreciate that. It's fun to just chat about it. So uh, yeah, the movie took uh, a really long time to make. For one, it was a pretty, as you saw, a pretty visual effects laden film. So mm. that right then and there, uh, we you know most films at this budget probably probably would have not even a quarter of the time we had mm. in uh, post. So we were in post for almost a year and oh, wow. I don't even okay. know, like three months or something like that. So really long time. Yeah, so that, that took a, a while. Time. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, you know, just with films like this, uh, it was actually all produced by uh, Peter Chernin, Geno Topping. So Chernin, which is a part of Fox, Mm. Uh, they produced all the Planet of the Apes films. Um, we, we, uh, they pretty much financed it while while Fox was doing the distribution. So it was kind of it's not an indie by any means. It's a big studio film, but it yeah. was still sort of personally created, um, mm. really because Peter Chernin loves, you know, loves the ocean and loves these kind of movies. You know, um, he's just such a fan. So. Um, you know, in that way, the film came about in a different type of way. Um, and a lot of people were like, oh my God, you know, it, I, I started working on this movie like four years ago. So, uh, um, oh, yeah, yeah, it would be by it now. just sat, it, it sat for, uh, almost a year when we were done because right as we finished Fox mm. was bought by Disney. Yeah. So then okay. we entered into that sort of chaos. Uh, well, not right. chaos, but it was just an unknown time of what exactly was going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 because from from everything that I can find out, it was it was done and dusted in as again as far as I can see, was it was it finished and edited and and done in 2017, or did the edit come later? Um, I guess it was 27. Yeah, because it was so it was it was uh, exa almost exactly at the end of 2017. I guess we shut mm. the doors to the editing office in November of 2017. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. So then that would have been, I guess, like just around the time that uh, things were, were starting to happen. With Fox. Oh, yeah. Was, there were rumors and rumblings in, yeah. in public anyway, which obviously means on the back end of it, they, they've been going for a little while anyway. Um, yeah, exactly. It starts to filter down. So, um, so I guess, I mean, were you, and again, you know, regardless to basically whatever you were able to say but i mean were you did you know was there a plan of when this was going to be released or was it just not a case really of, it's I, done. I be, and i you know i have no idea exactly what politics were happening but i'm sure mm. uh i'm sure you know i'm sure there was a lot of things i didn't know about but i guess uh at that time it was just you know we were we knew basically we were going to be or my bosses 
you know, we were going to be a part of Disney at that point. And, mm. and we made a pretty scary underwater film. So when you find out you're going to be a part of Disney, immediately, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, oh my God, like maybe. Not exactly their remit, is it normally, to be fair? Yeah, so that was that was tricky because I, I thought maybe, honestly, I didn't know, but I was like, maybe we're just getting canned. Mm. Um, not canned, but straight to, you know. Yeah. I knew it wasn't going to be Disney Plus because they're not yeah. going to play something <laughs> like this. So, you know, a long time ago, I thought maybe it would be Disney Plus. I was like, oh, maybe, you know. Yeah, well, because no one, no one knew what was happening with that, did yeah. they? They didn't know. But then I, I tell you one thing which, which could have happened, I guess, maybe if if the budget wasn't so high was that disney you know they, they own a majority of hulu now don't they so right so that could have i mean gone did straight you, there yeah yeah uh, was was there any rumors of that from your side no, of it or was nothing, it always nothing like that it's just, honestly i knew because we knew we, we knew right when we finished disney was buying fox mm. so then you're like oh geez so nobody we're not going to get a release date from fox because fox isn't going to program yeah. it at this point now basically disney is going to program everything so then after the first of the year um we'd had the editing office closed for a few months and at that point you're like all right well what's happening now and just because mm. there were so many <clears throat> i mean there was probably i don't know what kind of paperwork happens when two two big studios merge or well one mm. eats another one but um at that point, there was like months and months of just waiting. And then I finally got the call one day and they're like, okay, we're getting a release. They love the film and Disney's going to release it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank God. I literally wow. was like, and I knew, you know, they gave me the date and it was like January. So I was like, yeah. oh no, that's like not a great time to release. But <laughs> I was honestly, up until then, I thought, I God, I didn't even know if we were going to get a release. So well, yeah, I, I was just happy that we had it. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that that's a long time in the dark to, to yeah. You know, I guess kind of was... pun intended for the film, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my god, all my films um... seem to do with isolation and just like <laughs> being alone. <laughs> Well, well, I guess that's that, that, that's kind of, again, like a good thing to kind of segue into is that if anyone's not watching this and has seen Underwater, is that you're the other major film that you're known for. Um, and I recently went back and watched the trailer for it because I, oh, I remember cool, watching yeah. it and I loved that film. I yeah, thought it was a fantastic you. film, um, and it's the signal. There, there's a, there, I think there's a, there's a, there's one or two with that name, but it's the one with uh, Lawrence right, Fishburne, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, the now, later one. Unfortunately, there was an mm. earlier one. I kind of felt bad about that later. I was like, oh, there's another sort of science <laughs> fictiony signal. It's word. I mean, totally ate them up. Yeah, uh, na yeah, but names, is, it's names, isn't it? They they always kind of come and yeah. go. But you're um, you you've been working in the industry predominantly as a like a cinematographer turned director is that is that right yeah yeah i came up basically as a cinematographer mm. um and then uh i would just i would i worked for panavision for a really long time like a camera company yeah and then got a chance to make um really a bunch of music videos that i turned into a movie called love uh for the oh, band okay. uh angels and airwaves and they that lead singer was part of blink 182 tom DeLong. So he financed my first film, which is super crazy. It's like very, it was very ambitious. I like built the whole space station in my parents' backyard. And I think I, that might be on Hulu too. I don't know where that one is, but uh, okay. that's a trippy, weird isolation movie about a uh, an astronaut who gets left up in space. But um, okay. anyway. yeah, so, well, that's new to me. I, I, I'd like a link to that. Or, or It's a weird movie, uh, yeah. man. It's super weird, but... Uh, <laughs> So I don't know if this is true, but it premiered at the Santa Barbara Film Festival. And somebody told me, because that year Christopher Nolan was getting, um, you know, some awards for mm. uh, some film or something. But somebody was like, oh, Christopher Nolan was in here. He watched your film. And then when you watch, uh, I swear to God, when you watch Interstellar and they cut to these like real interviews with people about the Dust Bowl. Mm. that's like exactly what I did in my movie. Literally, like I cut to these people and I do these real interviews with people. And, but I make them seem like they're part of the, the movie or they pertain to what's happening. Yeah, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's true or not, but I, mean, <laughs> I know he really was there. I just don't know. Yeah. Whatever. But uh, anyway, that's my first film love. Then second film was signal. And that one went to Sundance and that was just an awesome film to make. It was like, mm just an, it was such a fun cast and we were just getting like super crazy out in new mexico and just 
we had three million dollars and it was just the it was so much fun man that movie was just the best that was like when i was just like oh god i'm gonna i just love to direct movies <laughs> you know it's like when it was it felt like a real movie compared to my first one which was like me yeah well i guess it's like expanding out into the yeah more, more yeah. of the industry and things like that isn't it so what yeah. um so then from signal what what happened there like talk, talk me through the, the the process from signal moving forwards because that's i guess yeah I, I i would i would count that as probably your breakout like if i say the signal sure, and sure. i was to put the trailer down below which which i will for oh, those cool, watching awesome. i will leave the trailer down below i, I yeah we won a trailer a... award for that or we got nominated and the only people mm. who beat us in that category was uh gravity yeah so that's exactly so so i i i would have said that the signal is, is is absolutely like your your you know your your breakout i guess like like i say like most people would have would have heard or at least seen that or or, or you know know of it to a degree so right. from from signal then what what happened there moving forwards you know it was a really uh that was a really long process that's where i always tell people like kind of i as a filmmaker coming up i was really lucky where there was really no social media or anything like that um I'm 37 now and I guess you know I it's like you just I was just blatantly trying to become a filmmaker like I'll, I'll do whatever you know I'll shoot whatever <laughs> even when I was first was a cinematographer I didn't even know how to do it I just told people I could do it and then you know day <laughs> one you he kept asking me like how to do something and I'm like oh I don't know man <laughs> yeah you can put that over there but uh but basically, right right after Signal finished, um, I, I I had a bunch of projects I I was writing. I wrote this movie called World Breaker. That's like still one of my favorite things I've mm, ever written. Um, that that was announced by a few people, wasn't it? It's like yeah, amazing. Warner Brothers bought it. And then here's where I'm getting at. You basically <laughs> learn as a filmmaker. People love to just buy your stuff. Yep. But like, it's really really hard like to make a movie yeah it's so hard and world breaker was like moving around and then i sold another one and then um i just learned like wow it is so hard to once i'm here yeah it's like now it's really hard to get it made <laughs> and uh you really have to have something that someone else is almost championing like just almost for themselves and Mm. Uh, World Breaker got really close. Uh, we, um, you know, we basically had Russell Crowe on board, and we were maybe going to wow. go shoot it over in China, and everything was moving with that. I actually met Ridley Scott while I was in Beijing in the top of this Hyatt hotel. It was a crazy moment, surreal. Um, yeah, but it, at the same time, uh, it was going to shoot in China, and it just felt like, man, this is going to be kind of difficult to to make even though it's my own film mm. it just felt like it wasn't coming together right and underwater came along and in the end i just felt like maybe this is a better choice mm. because it's being made by a real studio here we're not going to go shoot somewhere that you know is really really far away and yep. um and so basically i just took underwater and abandoned my own project which <laughs> you know is really hard to do but the good news is i wrote it so it will be there someday yeah um, but that took years all of that took like years after the signal mm. um so it just happened really slowly and i'm i'm glad like back then i didn't know how long all this stuff would take because then i would have just been like i don't want to be a filmmaker everything takes too long <laughs> so so um so so underwater because underwater is written by and i said this in my review i was really surprised to see the writers on, yeah, um, a lot underwater, and I meant no disrespect, but it no, was just no, of course, having yeah, seen their previous yeah. work to, to sure. underwater. It's a step yeah. up, like it's oh, a big <laughs> step up. Thanks. So, I mean, how, uh, how I don't know how did that they come think around that or whatever, but who knows? Um, yeah, the oh, writers... well, I, I can say it. I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, uh, Brian Duffield created it, and uh, and you know he did an un unbelievable job in, in a sense that when I first got the project and I sat down to read it, I just was <laughs> just went right through it which rarely happens you're always like mm. page 15 you're like oh dude i i got some laundry to do or you just you know, don't want to finish the script it's not good this yeah. was so fast-paced mm. um and just exciting and i wanted to know what was going to happen and so he did a really great job with that um and then uh you know and like anything there's this in this studio environment a lot of people want changes and this and so another writer got hired after 
Brian sold us his amazing script or mm -hmm. sold the studio his amazing script. And then, uh, and then from there, you know, kind of different people worked on it. So the film, if you ever find the, the screenplay, what I did is pretty different probably than what Brian really created. He created something that was almost like Tarantino, at, like very oh, okay. pulpy. It was, yeah, it was yeah, very yeah. pulpy and like kind of a, not a comedy, but it was almost mm -hmm. kind of a comedy. And then I, I basically wanted to do something slightly more mystical or serious with it. Mm. And it's not the, well, I guess we don't want to say spoilers, do we? Or... We'll, we'll, we'll do a spoiler warning in okay. a little bit, because I do want to okay. touch on spoilers, because I think there's some very interesting stuff. Because the thing that, that you're thinking on. about, that wasn't in the story. Okay. I just did that. All right. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, because that's kind of yes. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I definitely 100% want to talk spoilers, like without a shadow of a doubt. Um, okay, so, and I, and I guess like a lot of these, like, I mean, how, how many changes were like studio based versus, you know, your own kind of additions? Like what, what was the sort of percentage up with, with all of that then, I guess? Um, uh, I mean, we all work hand in hand, hand mm. you know, um, I guess what I'm saying is all these movies have a lot of writers on them, but a lot of them don't really get credited uh, yeah. but for Writers Guild stuff. And, um, and I, you know, at the end of the day, I always try to be sensitive to the fact, well, I'm not sensitive while I'm working because you just can't be. But now, yeah. in hindsight, you, you know, yeah, I, like Brian Duffield really created this. And I, I guess at the end of the day, I was lucky enough to get to make the darn thing. But mm -hmm. I always want to make sure that he gets his credit in terms of the fact that, like, I don't know, it would obviously be awful to have a movie. And then after a while, you're not really a part of it anymore. Yeah, um, of course. This I is kind of how you... it works. But, yeah. You know, but uh, in terms of the, we were always working step step by step in terms of changes and studio stuff. Hmm. Where you really get into like more studio notes that maybe you're like, oh, I don't want to do that or whatever. Not not usually in the writing stage. It's usually for me personally that would be more in the editing stage where you're like, okay. oh, we we got to cut this out or yeah. the movie's too long or, you know, that's where normally you encounter changes that you maybe, maybe as a filmmaker, like disagree with, or, mm -hmm. you know, want to change, but there weren't that many of those things on this only because the movie, every shot was so expensive mm. that it really wasn't like, I have an opinion about this and you have an opinion about this. It was more like the movie is this much money and if we do <laughs> one more shot we're bankrupt you know <laughs> did the um sp so, speaking of budget didn't w w weren't you given more money at, at a certain point it was was it initially like a, a smaller budget and then it it, it you know went it up to a certain to be, amount or you know is 50 million dollars but it wasn't supposed to be quite that much at the beginning and then we mm. went to um uh, we went to louisiana where there's a tax credit oh. I'm gonna so, I'm, I'm gonna interject just briefly then. So so how much was it then in the end? Because again, fifty million. Are, so it's straight it was 50, fifty million. Fifty. So that's surprising and then because some people a, have reported, and I'm sure you've like seen eighty, it, 80 and, yeah. million. Yeah. So no, that's yeah. good to hear. No, that that is yeah. good. Okay. No, it's fifty million. And here's the thing: I don't even know. I don't even know if that's fifty before the tax credit or yeah. After. You know, exactly. like I've never, they don't even tell you because they don't want you to know, you know, <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. And that's the other thing, because a lot of people need to, to this is good for people to know about movies is that they, you have so many moving factors, like the reported numbers are not necessarily always the numbers clearly, yeah. you know, as, uh, as witnessed here. And, and then there are also the other things which, which you've just said is that tax credits as well. They do come into it and you get, you know, move movement of, on finance movement of money. Of that as I, well sometimes like maybe the 80 they're talking about like like advertising or hmm. something like that like yeah. there's a lot of money put into pna yeah um, oh, absolutely for sure so usually it's double the budget like on a big mm. big movie so if you yeah. have a hundred million dollar movie they put a hundred million into pna yeah. um but I, I i definitely don't know any of those numbers for us but but yeah we're definitely at 50 and uh and again, that might only be 50 with the tax credit. So it might have even yeah. been less. And what's even crazier is I know we basically had to put 20 straight away towards the visual effects. So in wow. the end, the actual okay. production budget was pretty small in terms of like mm -hmm. on set production budget for a movie like yeah. this. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what um, so speaking about like sets and things like that, I I really enjoyed the sets on here, and what you're able to do with what I perceive anyway, because obviously I don't know, I wasn't there, but I would perceive there wasn't you know a lot of sets. There were no, some a lot of those locations. Were the same sets just kind of tweaked yeah um, yeah and like if you so, look carefully the roebuck might be the kepler <laughs> they are <laughs> the roebuck is the kepler and the kepler is the roebuck and you know what's even crazier is you know the murky well i don't know do you want to know these things or is this like yeah no story? no I, I genuinely so, want to know you remember know. like when they they get finally to the roebuck and they're like they open the doors and then they're helping mm. john gallagher's character smith like they're helping him and then they go and they climb up and then that hallway Mm. is a tank hallway that we built and it's the same hallway that you saw earlier um when uh, um paul's character gets pulled under that grimy uh, very okay. like, yeah, dark yeah. so it's the same hallway just redressed you know <laughs> so just because that's I, a tricky hallway and it needed to hold mm. water you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you managed to do it like uh there, there was so much which you clearly managed to do with the limitations of, a, of the budget even though the budget for something like this is definitely a lot more than i've ever had so that that yeah was sure. but the problems yeah. are the same it's just like a bigger workforce which then makes mm. it harder to actually sort of communicate to people because now instead of just telling one guy or just telling yourself like oh let's move the camera over here <laughs> you're you're like talking to 40 people and they all yeah. start walking every which way you know and so you're like oh <laughs> man let's just move the camera like right here you know, it's it's a lot harder when you actually have a lot more people because nothing really makes sense anymore. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, there's so many moving parts you've got to kind of conjoin yeah. together, I guess. Um, and with and this kind of movie, there's those. Sorry, not to cut you off, but no, 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 it's no, like no, a please. puzzle. It's literally yeah. like, oh, they got to put this suit on, and you got to put that yeah. suit on. It takes half, forty-five minutes to get out of the suit. Uh, well, I'm sure so. the, the timing on something like this would be insane. So I, um, I, I, I was actually in. A very very small indie film in the UK, um, and even that, like the timing of things like that, was again like it's there's so much waiting around. There's so much. No, we need to set this up, get this these effects ready, get this here, get that there, and yeah. and that was with, you know, that that's a tiny 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 group of people. So I I can't right. possibly imagine what it'd be like with, you know, tens of of, of, of people and all these moving parts. It would just be insane. Um, so, so, can you check out the film? Is it around or it's? Um, so it, it's actually in the edit at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm not a big part of it. I'm not a big. Oh, part okay. Of it, so that's still that's cool. To... That's cool. Well, it was you got to so... yeah, go was... to the hurry up and wait. <laughs> <laughs> so it was yeah, it was just interesting. Like it was. I think it's good if you talk about these things to experience it as well firsthand. So it was good. I had the opportunity to come, you know, come up, and I was like, yeah, no, absolutely, I will. Um, I 100 percent want to do that just just so I can have. You know another perspective on film sure. um so again going back to the film underwater um who, who did the casting what was the process for casting for this uh fox casting so in the past you work with a casting agency uh like the signal <clears throat> which mm. very, not very different but it's a little different because you kind of have your your person maybe who helps with the casting mm. um but in this, it was Fox casting, which is a different, uh, different beast because it's really like, you know, there's a lot of uh, not politics, but you know, the studio well, they, they want certain people, numbers, certain people and that they things think things would be that, good uh, as well. Of course, um, so it was just a little different, and and then you know, just uh, but but it always a, a cool process. Like I don't know, it's just a dream come true for me, obviously, to be just mm. making a bigger movie. And, uh, but you're like, you know, you're doing it through Fox. So at that time, now it'd be different, yeah. but, um, so yeah, the, uh, I think even right when we started the, there was a new person that was heading up casting at Fox. And what was weird about that was like, right as we kind of got the movie going, we were talking to somebody else and then like. Then the movie really got greenlit and going and it was like a new person so it was like <laughs> but it's the same process you know you're getting tapes and the yeah. big thing is is finding the main person and and um our first choice really was Kristen, mm. and she responded and was like i want to do it so it's pretty I, cool. I i i think personally you got a really good performance 
um, yeah, out, of, she, out, of, out of Kristen Stewart. She, I thought it was cool. It's a little different role kind of for her, you know? So mm. you just, I, I feel like she's not always the, well, she's always a lead, but she's not necessarily in the things most people know her for. She's usually more of a, in my opinion, like a reactive character, whereas yeah. this one, she's very proactive, yeah. um, which was pretty cool. Yeah, I, she I, works so hard, like mm. incredibly hard. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I've seen some of those like, uh, well, now now they're doing a whole bunch of the cast interviews because I think I think Disney have realized that the, the word of mouth for this film has kind of picked up a little bit or, or there's a little bit more buzz and then they've scheduled in a whole bunch of or, or they've no, been pre-recorded i don't know but yeah maybe so i'm not sure yeah they, they, they just seems to be a little bit more um kind of behind the scenes oh, things cool. dropping and snippets oh, cool. here and there yeah um yeah. to around the film so i have i have seen some of the things which they were talking about like she was even um afraid of of you know underwater being Hated underwater water. and things like this and yeah she, so she literally right away told me um I don't like water. That's why I think mm. I like this movie. It would be, you know, it was really a challenge that I think yeah. she was like, let's check it out. And I think as well, like it's, it's important to note um, for anyone watching this that ha perhaps has not seen Underwater. Um, and, and I will say it, and I don't mean any disrespect, but if anyone is put off by Kristen Stewart, um, don't be. Don't be at all. Yeah. Um, because uh, she was actually a... really, 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 really good in this. Genuinely. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I I really liked her in this. Um, and like I said, and I think that's down to the, the, the role, but then also you as a director, I think you managed to get a really good performance um, oh, out, out of her in, in the role. I think she was really, really good. Um, yeah. And also, she... also you had you had Isaac from uh, Dead Space. Oh yeah, in, in the movie he's just as well. Running down the hallway, <laughs> but that's one of my best friends actually now. So he's the main actor in my first movie, Love. Mm. The only person okay. in the movie is Isaac, is <laughs> Isaac Clark, who's gonna write. Who I yeah. just literally, well, earlier today was, uh, like we went down to the. There's like this Russian spa banya thing here. We 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 hang out every day. Tomorrow <laughs> we're probably gonna go see Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> uh, but don't ask me why. He just wants to go see Doctor oh, Doolittle. Dear. But he's oh, one dear. of my best. He is probably my best friend. So yeah, yeah. Um, he's awesome. Yeah, he's just running down the hallway in this, and then he plays the voice. Anytime hmm. you hear a voice like "Welcome to the Robot," that's gonna write. So uh, okay, okay, cool, dude. But we, yeah, we, dude, on the signal, uh, we played through like every night. We were just playing uh, Dead Space. <laughs> and it was so funny playing with him because I played, I played his character. It was Dead Space two or three or whatever, where there's mm. like multiple characters. Yeah. And yeah. he's playing the other guy, and he's screaming, like <laughs> left and right while we're playing. I'm like, what, dude? You made this game. Like, you didn't know that was going to. You're happen. in the game. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't know, man. I just was working and like doing the movement, but we didn't oh, see all dude. this crazy shit <laughs> so, <laughs> it was fun man we played through the whole game but anyways yeah he's a good friend of mine okay <laughs> oh no that's funny that's really good to hear um okay so yeah i mean i uh, yeah let, let, let's get, let's get back to underwater so um i really like the cinematography in this um boy on, i think like boy on Bazzelli. Oh, obviously yeah but it's so there's 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 definitely uh elements of your own uh, cinematography in there, from what I could see anywhere. And I don't want to put words into your, in your, in your, into your mouth. Um, but looking at the signal to this, and obviously the scenes which are um, set not so much on under uh, underwater um, in the stations on in underwater. Um, I think that's very much. I, I could see similarities, even though the cinematographer was different between both mov movies. Um, and was that something which you you directed yourself, or what was the the, the sort of design choice uh, around that in terms of the photography? Um, I mean, every cinematographer definitely has their own sort of way they do things. I just particularly loved, you know, I I just knew right away after meeting uh, Boyan that we shared very similar aesthetics and the same mm. kind of like color palettes that we liked. Um, so in that sense, you just always try to find a partner who is going to, um, you know, basically do what you would want to do. 
Um, in on the signal, I had David Lan Lanzenberg, who's incredibly talented, and you know, I was a lot pushier with him probably because it was my first okay. movie. So I was like, ah, oh, we gotta yeah. do this, we gotta do this, and uh, and God bless him, he put up with it. And then I, I really actually wanted him to do uh, underwater, um, but there was some there were some politics there with I'm a younger director at the time. Mm. Um, old, but at the time, <laughs> so they were like, "No, we got to pair you up with a, with a older guy." So okay. sadly, I wasn't able to do it with um, David. But Boyan found Boyan, and just he's like a five year old kid trapped in this older man's <laughs> body, and he just he had such a zest and such an eye. Mm. And then I, I, I learned early, early, early on, and and you'll see this if you ever check out Love, that. 50% if not more than 50% of good cinematography is just making sure you have good stuff to shoot whether mm. that's a face or a, you know cool panel back there or cool background lights or it's what you're shooting and how you fill up the frame and how you, yeah. you know so with Boyan I just always tried to give him the coolest most interesting stuff to shoot okay. and um so I try not to and you'll see a lot of like style choices I guess like mm. slow mo here or that. Yeah, I do want to touch on like, slow mo. As well. Yeah, that's where I'm like, okay, we got to do this shot. But uh, for the most part, I just uh, let him kind of do his thing as long as he had good stuff to shoot. Mm. Okay, well the so that, well that's interesting then I guess that he shot the know, ring. I don't know if you ever saw that, but yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty. Okay. You know, we just share like the same. We yeah. love green and like shallow mm. depth of field. Yeah. So. Well, like, yeah, I mean, that, it, that, it, it's, it, it's very clear that there's a, a lot of similarities there, but in a good way. Um, I yeah. liked it because it's, you know, it's nice to look at a director um, and their work and see a recurring theme. Um, yeah. Because then you, you know that their movies, as you go into them, will have something that you like. Um, oh, cool. Whether yeah. it be like thematic, you know, like the, the actual theme of the film itself or color palette as you say or do you know what i mean things like that and it, another it's big nice thing is lens see. choice like i tend mm. to only shoot one two lenses like most of yeah. this movie was a 35 millimeter shot on a 65 camera so that feels kind of you know it just has a very specific feeling and mm. as soon as you jump outside those lenses it doesn't feel right to me it doesn't feel like experiential okay. um so i was probably like bossy about like i don't know let's do it this lens you know <laughs> and very rarely do we like go to like a hundred or two hundred mm. lens like you're watching okay. legends of the fall or some movie like that you know john toll it's like 300 mil lens of a horse <laughs> you know? so so the um the the, the choices of slow-mo in this film i thought were very well done because i oh, think thanks. like slow motion can be overdone Right, but I think yeah. I, I, like that was one of the things I really liked from the trailer, actually. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, was, I thought that was cool. You were saying that. I was like, oh gosh, I, I when I was good, watching that, I was like, I it. hope I did it right. Yeah, <laughs> we just I storyboard a lot, or and my mm. my buddy who helps do a lot of design, Jared Purrington, um, mm. he's a storyboard artist, and he he really concepted up the suits. But anyways, we um, you know we just sit there and draw, and then you're imagining like where you want to draw focus to, like and like what feels like you can kind of go inside a person's head and then to mm. me that's proper that's the place to do slow-mo you know yeah wherever you're just like oh shit boom you know it's almost like you're making sound effects in your mind while you're yeah. drawing these little pictures <laughs> <laughs> so um but I, I really i really did like that i thought that was uh um, oh, thank you so much i just thought it was a good choice like because slow-mo can be overdone and it, and it's yeah it was one of those things that when it when it started to come out like, like cgi i guess you know cgi was way overdone and they did it just because they could and it's the yeah. same it's slow-mo when when that technology or it became um became more of a fad and it was just done to death yeah. Um, and there's two movies where uh, notably the slow-mo is good choices um, underwater more recently very very good choices of slow-mo because it's done just enough um, and peppered in in just the right way and then you've got uh, Dread 2012 with Carl oh, Urban oh yeah that's so good right that movie's amazing yeah yeah yeah, like and, that movie. Uh, yeah Alex Garland fantastic um, yeah but again really really good choices of slow-mo just 
just peppered in in the right way. Obviously, with Dread, it's a it's a little bit different because it's part of the you know the the, the it's a plot device, I guess. Really, isn't right? It? Yeah. Um, but I guess if you're saying, <clears throat> you know, you're thinking about where to add them, um, and 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 how people would be experiencing the world around them at that point with with the slow mo which you did um i guess that's a similar kind of plot uh yeah in, yeah with slow mo as well in some regards like if something is going off you always say to yourself you know time slows down don't you like so yeah so i guess uh, another and good it's like use of it specific specificity like in that moment she's trying to figure out what's going on so she's like mm. you know i don't know if you've ever caught yourself like you hear the noise but you like open up your mouth you're like you're never like, yeah. <laughs> no, you go, you know, it's, yeah. really, it's a natural, I don't know if it helps us hear better or what, but you're <clears throat> very specific. And in this moment, there's drips. So she's like, mm. you know, yeah. and then it's like what, that what drip seemed like a perfect transition to just go slow for a second. Like, mm. oh, something bad's happening, you know? <laughs> um, but, right. So let, let, let's get into... I, I want to, because I do want to talk, talk on spoilers, and I want to give enough time sure. for, for spoilers. But just briefly, um, let, let's talk about like the the set design and 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 well, the suit design and the aesthetic choice and things like that. Like, oh yeah, what sure. Was... So, oh, go, um, go, go, be my yeah, guest. it was my buddy Jared Purrington, who um, I also drew the legs on the signal. Um, yeah. So he designed the legs; those crazy geometric kind of things. I uh, just a buddy of mine that I just love his work. He actually worked for Zack Snyder for a long time. Mm. Um, worked on a lot of his movies and he's another one of my best buddies. And um, yeah, we, we designed these like for world breaker. If I ever make that movie, Oh my God, it's just gonna, people are going to lose their <laughs> mind. We have, it's like a barbarian movie about these like guys who get stuck up in this castle mm. and the Normans are like coming around them. Anyways, so we had a lot of chunky cool design stuff for that and when we started doing these suits we wanted to make something that was like really i'm a big anime fan and like mecha and mm -hmm. you know i i did love gears of war and all that kind of stuff um I, I so i just wanted might, big chunky <laughs> brutish suits you know yeah um and so yeah jared really did a lot of the early designs and he gets credit for him and then we took those to another artist named tor frick who is a really amazing 3D artist who does these really industrial, chunky... He makes stuff that just only would work, you know? Not yeah. like... It just it just is bulky and cool looking because you're like, oh, that would work. So yeah, he yeah, took Gerd's yeah. picture and started building it from there. And then Legacy ended up actually building the suits. Mm. Um, like, so what, that's what, what, what were they made out of? Well, the, God, that's the hard part. So they were made out of a hard shell plastic because they needed to be able to get wet. Yeah. Um, and then those uh, suits then had, then there was another suit that was made that was just a top and that had a real piece that could really go underwater and had all the hoses to it and all the compression stuff. And that yeah. weighed 200 pounds. So the plastic suits weighed about a hundred pounds. Maybe the girls were like 85 hmm. and then the, the the suit that went underwater was like 200 maybe 250 oh, pounds because wow. it had to actually sink underwater yeah 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 um, wow. and then finally at the very end because the suits were so heavy and it was like just crushing the actors mm. we were able to make two more suits out of foam and those could um, not get wet yeah, and yeah so yeah. in the very very end like nora's second suit was a, a foam suit which was pretty amazing for them it was hotter for them but a lot easier because mm. it's like 30 pounds you know? yeah <laughs> bit of a difference compared to 100 to, to, yeah <laughs> oh my god uh, it was like just the, the faces that the actors are making in the movie mm. is real pain it's like <laughs> it, it's actually really, wincing right now <laughs> yeah it's so bad and i have never worked on anything where you just don't want to tell them to do it again because you know mm. that they're so miserable <laughs> and uh can, that we, can, was we, can we please do that shot again please <laughs> yeah literally and uh that was that was really hard for me because i didn't expect that i i, I didn't like brace myself for uh you know the pain i was gonna put mm. them through but they're <laughs> they're gladiators they're all beasts for it like you know mm. testament right. to them 
let's let's talk spoilers. So sure. ev- everyone, this is your spoiler warning. If you haven't seen The Signal, though, uh, for those that don't want to stay for spoilers, highly, highly encourage you guys to go out and watch The, uh, the Signal. Uh, underwater. underwater. And, and, the <laughs> and The Signal. And The Signal, yeah. Why not? Both of them, please. It's early for me, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. the light's coming out. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God, We've, yeah. we've watched the sun come up. Um, but you... you Go out and watch Underwater. It's a fantastic film. Um, but we'll talk spoilers now because there's there's a lot I want to talk about. Um, and there's some... Yeah, I... J- tell me... Talk talk to me about the creatures. The, the sure. creatures, the... Because there's three from what I could tell. Um mostly is there three is there what is there it's one really more? two it, it's well it's really well there's oh, a are we talking that there's oh okay oh yeah, uh, yeah okay. There's, there's three yeah okay um, so there's, there's three featured yeah but two yeah. of them are part of the same life cycle yeah is that right? right correct one's a baby and the other okay. is a little older All right. um but basically yeah spoiler alert this is a <laughs> secret lovecraft love yes. story <laughs> yes uh where you get to see Cthulhu briefly at the end, which mm. you know, I I love like I can't believe that. I honestly when that happened. He was uh, written just in blown the script away as as a big like whale like creature, a massive mm. behemoth. It was yeah. called the behemoth. And in designing the movie, we're done shooting, but we never obviously shot the behemoth. Yeah. We're gonna do them later. Um I just basically was like, well, you know, and even the designs of the little creatures changed a little bit. The earlier they were like more squid. Oh, actually, there's four. There's four. There's a you see a okay. squid-like thing lash out at her at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So that thing, when she's lost, it's kind of mm. like a squid tentacle thing. Yeah. That was almost going to be the original creature, ah. but it wasn't good. It wasn't scary enough. And my buddy mm. uh, Andy Muschietti, who directed it, yeah. one of my closest filmmaker friends. We were watching some early stuff one night, and he was just like, "I don't, I don't think that's scary enough." And mm. I was like, "I don't think so either." So <laughs> we were early enough in the designs that I was able to shift more to a mystical being, which I just knew. Mm. I knew right away. I was like, I knew right away that like if someday we find footprints or something like that at the bottom of the ocean, that's gonna scare people. Mm. You know, not just like a weird creature or a big, you know, yeah. Whatever. I mean, that- so that's where. I, we started going Lovecraftian, and I was like, mm. I just knew, I was like, well, I'm just going to make these creatures, and uh, I'm not really going to tell anyone what yeah. they are. I'm just going to make <laughs> sure they get designed this way. <laughs> and it was like, they're already done, like the big behemoth is already done, and the, the little creatures are like living in its skin, which was, you know, kind of taken from the idea of that frog with the things in its back. Yeah, know? okay. And, uh, you know, I don't know. There's really no mention of that in the Cthulhu world or anything like mm. where the little beings are like part of him. But um, I just was like, all right, well, making Cthulhu here. And <laughs> it's like he's already designed, he's already done. And so he's like, that looks like Cthulhu. And <laughs> You're my like, boss does, it, like, does it really? <laughs> who's, who's Cthulhu? <laughs> and uh, they like didn't really know. And so, you know, I was just like, well, yeah, he's like an old god. He's he's a god. <laughs> They've woken up an old god. And yeah. they didn't really... It didn't matter to them because they were just like, well, he looks big enough. All right, cool. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... I'm, I was like, God, people are going to love this. Like, you don't understand. Yeah. Nobody's ever made a Cthulhu film. People try to do it. Mm. But this is the perfect way to do it because it's like nobody goes in knowing about it. That's what I, That you, is like, what I really liked about it. Is yeah, that that's the best it, it way to do Cthulhu. And I was like, that's it. That, that's it because the thing There's about the only like, way to do Cthulhu, you know? I, yeah, I, I genuinely agree because people are people, cosmic, uh, like the, the, the cosmic horror and things like that of Lovecraft is, is very difficult to do. I think if you go in with the intention of, I need to make it cosmic horror, I need to yeah. make it very, you know, a, a level of ambiguity and things like this. I think like having it grounded and then them just seeing it and going. Oh right, okay, yeah, God, so this is this is something. I think and that, that think is about, cosmic horror right there. Yeah, every great Lovecraft story is always about people putting the pieces together, mm. right? It's like whether it's the outsider or any, it's always like somebody trying to go back and figure out 
wait, what happened here? And they're like, they're going down the steps further. Mm. Mountains of Madness, you're going down the steps deeper and deeper and deeper into it. Yeah. And you're discovering things that are like weirder and weirder and weirder. And that's where the cosmic horror comes from, where mm. you can't really explain it as it's happening, right? Yeah. And that is why, because guarantee when they make whatever, because, you know, D.B. Weiss, all that, they're making some big Cthulhu thing. Guarantee right at the start, they're going to be like, there's this old God story. Yeah. Like, the thing whole, and the whatever, you know. A whole bunch and, of exposition. <laughs> and just yeah, it's like nonsense. You can't do it that way. No, if, I completely if, agree. If he arises, like we're just gonna be sitting here, yeah. and we're gonna get the news, and then they're gonna start tracking him like a weather pattern. And yeah. they're gonna be like, "All right, the whole city of LA needs to get out of there now," <laughs> you know, or it's like, "If you live in the UK, you gotta get across the, you know, whatever." It's like it's just gonna happen, and that's what mm. I loved about this was like I knew by putting him making that Cthulhu at the end. It's just something that happens to them, and they can't explain it, and that's where the cosmic horror comes yeah. from. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I so, loved it because as soon as we got bought by Disney, Disney was like, "Wow, we love that you put Cthulhu in," and I turned to my other boss. Yeah, they knew what it was, and I turned to wow. Like, See, they know, and they're like, "Okay." I'm like, "Look, <laughs> anything you can go to Etsy and just like type in, and then the yes, things come the up. Like thing. you, can, you can buy like you know." hot pads with Cthulhu on it. Yeah. You know? So I was like, this, crazy. Is, this is a good thing. Um, <laughs> anyways. So who, so, who, who designed uh, Cthulhu? Uh, MPC uh, did most of the design work. There's, okay. um, uh, gosh, I forgot the name of the artist, but there's a really talented artist, creature designer there, mm. who actually did do a lot of the recent uh, Xenomorph stuff for the newer Alien movies. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, he just did some tremendous, like, horrifying sculptures mm. that were, like, ZBrush sculptures. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then it had to get redone, you know, with the modelers and all those things. But he did the initial stuff. Mm. And uh, it was it was just, ah, like, you know, right when you see it, you're like, oh, this is, this is horrifying. Yeah. And yeah. I really wanted something, like, on the, the little guys, which the first one you see is, like, a little... Um, He's like a little, uh, like a baby one that, you know, they burrow yeah. into people and eat them or whatever, and then they'll grow up and be a bigger one. But yeah, yeah. Uh, he, uh, yeah, just, I really love the idea that they kind of were like, you know, these big, they could just like expand their bellies, like the way a starfish does or something mm. and just absorb something or. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I like that. Like it was, um, cause I didn't quite expect that to happen. Yeah, when it when it starts eating, I'm like, <laughs> just gulping oh, over okay. her, you know, like, <laughs> so, okay, yeah, yeah, this is happening now. Good lord, um, <laughs> I yeah, I, I love that. I thought it was absolutely amazing. Um, and what was the thought process behind? Because the, there are there are clues to that happening. I think, um, like the the opening credits, the opening crawl with all of the like newspaper clippings and things like this. And it looks like there's something that it, it, to me, it looks like someone's built a backstory, whether it was yourself or um, someone else in the edit bay or something like that. They've, there's a bit of a backstory there with the the company. They, they know something's happening. There was the old shepherd yeah. station. Yeah, Maybe yeah, they yeah. encountered something before. They did. And, yeah, they did. Yeah. So basically the captain who at one point was on the shepherd station, something had happened and some of this actually sort of exists because it had to get cut out just for time purposes but in a mm. way it was okay with me because it was like one of those things that felt you know, like like laborious really at the end of the day and while some people would be like oh okay that makes sense a lot of okay, other people yeah, would yeah. just be like oh god they're just explaining me all this stuff that happened so yeah one of those what, things the, you could piece together yourself yeah, or it could or be at shown. Least, and even if you couldn't, you got enough of it where you're like, yeah. at least you could think about it later and then go, mm. oh, wait, did he know? So anyways, yeah, in my story, in my head, um, he, he, they they had bored into something that was super weird before, abandoned that station, mm. you know, probably closed it up, didn't know, but it was really creepy. And, you know, if it's Cthulhu, there's like weird stuff that could be happening. And I... Mm. I loved the idea that maybe he was hearing, like he just, obviously losing his mind, or maybe even hearing his 
his daughter who had passed away speaking like how creepy yeah. would that be if you bore down into something and then pretty soon you're like hearing like your daughter's voices and yeah. stuff so he people had kind of gone mad there tn energy covered it up and they just mm. kept working and moved locations essentially okay all right they literally just abandoned the station and then yeah w went off um okay yeah and shepherd was cool it was a mobile station so it was like I wish he could, like the art shows what it really looks like in the movie. It's just lit okay. up, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. like a little crawler, anyways. Ah, uh, okay. Um, that's yeah, that's interesting. You can't you can't really tell that from. No, you can't. It sucks. The but, movie specifically, yeah. But um, good that that's thought a little bit more on it. With, if you with, look with really art. hard, like when she turns on all the orange lights, you see the mm. crawler pieces there. But yeah. most people just think they're like post or something yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and you can there's there's like some what appear to be like ruins as well um what, what look to be kind of like ruins um yeah those are like old mining expeditionary you know station mm. stuff that they built my feeling is this has been going on for so long and then the way i put it together is they like build stuff up at the top of the surface and then they just drop it down and it sinks uh, okay. and then they piece it together yeah 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 okay that's interesting um so and to, to get more into kind of the the spoiler territory of the 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 monsters and things like that is what um what's the the thought process behind the the absolute end sequence uh with cthulhu and the explosion and um well, and kind of what is happening there? Because Cthulhu is the one which moves the drill, isn't it? Right? Because the, yeah, they, they, there's just, a comment about the drill moving. going, that's too big. Exactly. Like, how yeah, would that huge. go down? Nothing could yeah. move something up and out like that. Mm. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, he just basically is breaking up and out. But I'm curious, you said people had like theories at the end. Like, what yes. kind of theories were people talking about were, were happening? Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so let, okay. Well, this I guess is kind of it like, almost seems like it could be open up because it cuts back and mm. it's happening to her or something. Is that what you mean? Or well, okay. So, so this is a bit of a, a an ending explained with a discussion with the director himself. So this this be interesting. So, um, so I've seen a few like uh, a, a few people. There's, there's a few theories which, which are floating around, which are actually, um, they, they've said a lot of what what you have actually just said and elaborated okay. on so there, there's sure. um there's the comments of shepherd station and um the, the 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 company being aware of something going on and obviously covering it all up yeah uh that there no one has outrightly said that it is cthulhu but you are happy to confirm oh that yeah. is cthulhu it is the yeah. great dreamer himself yes um i'll show you mine Lovecraft guidebook right here that my bulldogs have chewed up. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like how they just totally destroyed it. It's like, what the hell? Anyway. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, and so, yeah, so a lot of people have said uh, there's, there's obviously like a theme with respect to Christian Stewart and being able to uh, put herself before other people or other people before herself and things like that because of the opening shot of the the explosion in the hallway and um, the chap having to basically tell her to close the door right um, rather than you know uh, uh, basically putting herself before other people um, which is a theme she you know she's she's she like obviously from that opening shot it would appear that she is quite um, empathetic or compassionate whatever the word would be and and struggles to put herself um before other people or, or you know other people before herself which kind of loops back around at the end when she then chooses no i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna happy to to, to kind of kill myself sort of thing to allow you guys to right you know, right to, to kind of jet set up um into into safety hopefully but probably not because cthulhu's I presume Cthulhu is still alive. Is that is that right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. <laughs> that, Can't kill a god. Only air, really. <laughs> I'll say this. So I did have that note that like, because they didn't really know it was Cthulhu, my mm. bosses per se. They did later, but they're like, okay, well, she ha the thing has to die at the end. Mm. And I was like, okay, well, because in my mind, I'm like, well, it's Cthulhu. You really yeah, can't yeah. kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's why it's sort of like ambiguous. Like, 
to them, he's trying. You see his wings there too, by the way. Like that's where I, yeah, if anyone yeah, yeah. was ever wondering, I was like, mm. this is where you definitely see Cthulhu's wings, <laughs> um, which to them might have been fins, but you'll see they're big wings. Mm. Anyway, so he's crawling out, and I just made it look like he's he gets pulled back into this enormous blast, but yeah. I left it purposefully, like. You just kind of can't tell, so that way, you know, you can't really kill a god. No, you, you can't. just can't do it. So, no, no, no. Um, look, it satisfied that she killed him, but in my <laughs> head, uh, you, it's, you can't kill Cthulhu, so he's just getting going. But um, and um, and I guess like the closing. So, when is this set? When is this movie? It's like set? very ambiguity, like ambiguity. Yeah future basically and 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 um, uh, what is it they're mining for what is what is the whole kind of world part of it why are they down you know, there why are they down there under the yeah, threat a lot of people say like oil creatures. and stuff but i feel like by then we won't be using oil so hmm. for me it was like thermal energy mineral debris stuff i had okay. i had all these awesome pieces of art of these actual huge tanker ships that would just raise stuff to the surface uh, mm. we never really got into that but um they were like huge sludge ships that would just you would take like almost kind of like from dune like where they're mining the spice you know mm. i feel like yeah, in this yeah, world yeah. they're just mining some other like crazy mineral that we find down there but it's easy for people to just watch a movie and go oh yeah oil whatever <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know but it's basically minerals okay um, all right uh, but yeah, so at that very end shot where you see her, uh, you know, I just wanted like, you know, it basically uh, for me personally, it, like, even though you just saw, you kind of cut back cause it's like the mm. one shot takes place, but I just feel like it's just sort of a blip back to her going again into that mind's eye of like, all right, yeah, I'm sacrificing myself, but like mm. in that moment, she sort of awakens in a way. It's like, mm. you know, you. It's like this moment is a thousand moments, basically. Yeah. Uh, kind of like at the end of the gray, you know. It's like. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's probably gonna die, but at the same time, there's so much life to still be had in that final mm. moment of death. You know. Yeah, yeah. It was almost like an epiphany in in in, in that sort yeah. of last yeah. few moments, right? Yeah. Um, you're gonna watch I mean, Love, and you're gonna be like, "I've seen this before." <laughs> <laughs> so there's something similar that goes down. No, it's well, I need different. to find it's that. Very now. weird. It's super weird. That's yeah. I, I think it's gonna be fun for you to see have seen like this work, and then mm. to be like, go back and see this really, and you're gonna see a lot of gutter, which is just great. It's like you guys did a great job in it. But yeah, I built that whole space station in my parents' backyard. So I need I need to find that. Anyways, I need to yeah, I'll, that. I'll find if I'll, I'll try to. If you can't find it, I'll get you a copy. For sure, okay, so. perfect, perfect. Um, I mean, I, I I can keep talking for for ages about this to be honest, because I really did enjoy this film. Um, uh, thank you, man. I think, but obviously, you know, we are strapped for time for somewhat. Um, but I know what is next. What are you going to be doing next? What is it that um, you're looking to do? That's a good question. I, I mean, two of my favorite things war, war like Warbot, which is uh, Fox bought for me just after I finished this. Mm. Um, the, the only tricky thing there is uh, I don't exactly know now because they bought it before they were bought by Disney. Yeah. Um, so that I don't like. I really want to make Warbot next. It's kind of my my iron giant type of thing okay. um is, but, is that um, a hint at exactly what it's about or it's kind of the vibe of it it's a big robot and a little boy and okay. uh it's like i don't want to talk too much about it only no, 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 no. Please, other yeah. high profile writer like this script is done like and i finished yeah. it a long time ago but there's other people doing big projects that might get into that vein so I just yeah kind of keep okay it quiet but it's a really cool movie that I really, really want to do next. It actually takes mm. place on Mars, so I can say that. But oh, um, it's super weird, super awesome, and it's kind of like, ah, oh, God, yeah. I would love to do that next, but now because of the, the studio landscape, I'm not mm. sure if I will be able to or not. Um, and then World Breaker is 
sort of tied up too. So it's weird. You write these movies and you want to do them, but like you're not sure if you can or what you have yeah. to do to move them forward. So <laughs> those are the ones I really want to do. I have another one called Tautona that's at Warner Brothers. Mm. That really is in this vein. Okay. Of like right. crazy. It's basically they discover this lost city of gold um, mm. deep beneath the Tautona mine in, in, uh, in South America, uh, South Africa. Uh, okay. So it's based on a real mine, but then I made it so like they discover this weird lost city of gold, mm. and they're trying like nothing is what it seems down there. So yeah, 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 okay, we'll see. I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen with that one, but that yeah. one's over at, at Warner. So, and what um, <clears throat> if you were if you were given a sequel opportunity for this, would you do uh, a sequel to Underwater? I think I would if 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 there was the right. Uh, you know, it was like the right story. That's always yeah. what it's about. You know, it's like, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't I just rehash there's it? There's only dude. two ways to do a sequel. And it's like, you just come up with something super creative and maybe it just is the perfect story, but maybe it's not that mm. much money, but it doesn't matter because the story's great. Or yeah. the studio is like, here's a hundred million dollars. <laughs> if we're do it. The sequel. <laughs> and that's, when, that's the other way you could do it. So either way. Yeah. I, I would do one. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, but, but it's, it's worth asking because now, as, as you've said, um, and w you know, we, we spoke before this as well, like Benny off and, and Weiss are going to be doing a Lovecraft movie. You've got the color out of space. That's going direct. It's just been, it's not getting a release at all. Uh, it's going direct to Blu-ray. But okay. they want to do more as well. It seems to be a Lovecraftian Time. kind of resurgence, really. So, sure, yeah. You know, and obviously, if Disney knew that that was Cthulhu, um, you never know. Like, if, if it does well enough, you may actually get the opportunity to. Oh, so. you never know. Yeah. I mean, mm. I doubt it, but you never know. It would be well, so hard to do. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Well, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? It's like. <laughs> That's where the questions start going, but mm. um, I look. You never, you never say no to anything. I've learned that in this business. You always yeah. keep an open door. That's for sure. Yeah, very, very true. So, um, so I guess, like, I mean, I, I'll give you the floor, so you can kind of close out, really, and um, not not fully close out. But it, why should someone, if if they're on the fence to watch underwater, what would you say to them to watch underwater and your other works and just in general, you know, uh, uh, projects. Well, now that you've heard the spoilers, you owe it to us to go watch Underwater <laughs> if you made it this far. <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be disappointed. No. Um, see if you can hold your breath the whole way. That's a fun game to try to play. Um, don't <laughs> actually do that. That is, yeah, that no, would God. not work. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's just like the amount of love that we put into this movie and, and, uh, you know, my visual effects supervisor, he knew we were doing Cthulhu. So I was sending mm. him tweets last night. I was like, look at this guy. He knows what we're up to. And uh, <laughs> he was like, yes. And he, I think he actually gave me that tiki cup I was showing you. The Cthulhu oh, really? Tiki cup. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to link you to um, the, the, the Cthulhu figure, actually. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, I, please I think you'll do. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's very, very um, well made. Awesome. But yeah, you know, it's, it's just, crazy movie that just was made out of big labor of love with everyone involved so uh and it, it's a movie with just awesome like we we put so much effort into the sound design and then the mm. scope of things yeah that to feel it in a theater is like the way to feel it yeah you know when you see it at home later that'll be fun too but it just won't be it will not. It's not going to be as immersive. Overpower you, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. hearing, like I loved like creating those Cthulhu honking sounds, like mm. where you just hear him like, boom, woo, woo. you know, like he's laughing or something. Yeah. And and to feel the power of that in the theater is, mm. uh, I feel like that's just worth it right there. But uh, yeah, no, I completely agree. Completely. Agree. Anyway, yeah. Well. Thank you so much for your time, um, everyone. Dude, thank you for having me. Big, big fan of now. Like, I, well, when you. I found your stuff, I was like, this is great. This guy's like <laughs> spot on. Started watching all these other reviews of yours. It was awesome. So I, I appreciate you uh, having me on. So it's well, no, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity. It's good to, to discuss and kind of talk things through, um, especially about, you know, a movie, which is, I said, it's just for me, like it's a good return to kind of creature features it's not even really a creature feature, but it is. 
uh, I don't know. I, I, that this is absolutely my jam. That that is oh, that's, that's you, all, all, all over um, my, my kind of movie. So no, it was great to talk. It, it was it was really really good. So thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Oh, dude, thank you. Seriously. So I hope you enjoyed that interview. If you stayed this long, please do go and give William Eubank a follow over on his various social medias. Link down below, super swift, one word. Um, and also do hit subscribe for more kind of insights into the industry such as this. Movie reviews, pop culture news, things like that. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you did stay this long, thank you so much. Give this video a like and a share. It really does help me out. But as always, I've been Mr. H. Take care.